Hello, welcome to a special, special episode of Old But Gold, our Christmas gift to you, because I'll just put this up, you know, sure. during the Christmas season. Sure. Well, at this time that you are hearing this, we will uh, be on hiatus. We will have finished Shadows of the Empire by Steve Perry, that awful, awful Star Wars fanfic. You will be very happy by that point. Yeah. And... Uh, and we are presenting this. So originally, this was a live show um, on our Discord, which, by the way, our Discord link is in the description below if you'd like to join us there. We might have more Discord-only live streams. Yes. So this is to celebrate 600 subscribers. We would have done 500, but my lazy butt, <laughs> you know, just didn't come, like, put stick together a date or anything like that. So here we are celebrating 600 an adequate number. Yeah. And 400 more to 1000 and we will be able to monetize. I know. Until YouTube finds some stupid excuse not to. <laughs> um but yeah. So for those of you who are catching us live, welcome and for those of you who are listening to the recording uh later, welcome. <laughs> uh so for this special old but gold bonus episode for the holiday season, we are presenting to you just like Steve Perry did, our fan fiction. Of? A Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's forced in KG fan fiction. Yes. <laughs> now, uh, our, st- our Star Wars fan fiction. We wrote a few, uh, a few years ago during the pandemic, we got a little, um, shall we say, bored. And, uh, and disgruntled with Disney. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. So we uh, thought it'd be kind of fun. We came up with a premise for a Star Wars story. It's a bit nuttier than uh, your usual Star Wars uh, intake. This takes place um, after episode six, and it kind of details uh, Ray's parents. Yeah, so before you go, because I know that we just (laughs) dropped a bad word, Ray. (laughs) Uh, We dropped a bad word. I know. It's a bad word in the Star Wars fan community. So, we don't like the sequel trilogy. At all. I own them. (laughs) And the the tie-in novelizations. (laughs) But, uh, I'm not uh, a huge fan of those films. I could watch them, you know? They are at least watchable. Um... But I would sooner I, I would sooner just watch Andor again than watch any of the th- any of these three this sequel trilogy films. This is the only films, time I is, will be Which is kind of funny because <laughs> which is actually kind of funny because <laughs> KG would go. Actually, I would prefer the sequel trilogy. <laughs> no, not in this case. Wow, really? No. Nope. Wow. If I had the choice between watch the entire sequel trilogy or watch all twelve episodes of Andor, I would pick Andor. Uh, really? Yes. Well, we have to put you in that scenario sometime then, because no. you didn't even finish them. No. Um, so. <laughs> or I could just take the third option. Neither. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but let's say you had no third option. That's the fun of these. I would watch it with my eyes closed the entire time. That'd be very boring. Yeah. And kind of weird. It would be more entertaining than actually watching it, because I could imagine something else going on. Yeah, KG kind of equates uh, Andor to watching paint dry, yep. as far as she's concerned. Or grass grow. Yeah, no. Uh, I love that show. Uh, to me, that's some of the best Star Wars we've Anyway, had we're not here for Andor, we're here for this. Oh, but if only. <laughs> if only. Um, so anyway, yeah, we're not huge fans of the sequel trilogy, but I'm the type of person who will watch movies, think they'll think they're bad, but... As someone who is writing my own novel and someone who uh, likes to be a storyteller myself, a bit of a storyteller myself, um, I like to kind of find the potential in things. I like to kind of root out things that are good or would have been or would have had great potential if, uh, you know, if it was handled better. So we started, I think it was in 2019, we started, I came up with this idea where it's like, hey, like, think about it for a second. What if we actually followed Ray's parents before the events of the sequel trilogy? And then I was and like, and figure out how does how does Ray get to Jakku by the end? And I was like, hey, you know JoJo Part Five? <laughs> yeah, we were watching JoJo Part Five at the time that I that I was thinking of this, and I I loved that like group's chemistry, loved their different personalities and stuff like that. I'm like. You know, what if we took Ray's parents, but they were actually fun people, uh-huh. and they had like this 
basically this whole ship crew that they a found family yeah a found family that they traveled around uh within the galaxy and by the end of that story that found family helps helps them get Rey to Jakku while the Emperor yeah. is hunting her down. Yeah. So uh, that kind of turned into a few scripts that we had written extremely slowly over the course of several years. Um, so there's a lot of like JoJo influence in this. We're massive Star Wars fans, so I like taking whatever um, whatever I think can fit into a Star Wars story. I like to point it in there. I, I love that kind of world building. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's a little bit, again, it's a little bit sillier. It does get darker later on. Well, I think it's pretty... Not yet. We're right. not, we don't need to go into all that because who knows when we're going to get to that. Who knows when or if, yeah. But think we thought it'd this, be fun think to... Think of this as a, the rough draft for a potential story we may or may not write in the future. Yeah, may or may not write. Uh, I should also clarify that since we started, uh, uh, since we started writing the scripts in the time uh, since then... Uh, they did release a novel um, that actually expresses in more detail who Ray's parents were, what they were doing, and how they got Ray to Jakku called Shadow of the Sith uh, with Luke and Lando trying to like kind of f- figure out the whereabouts of Ray's parents. Um, we know that Ray's parents do have specific canonical names now. Dathan and Mirmir. Dathan and Mirmir. Those are not the names that <laughs> we gave them in the in these scripts because at the time that novel wasn't out. So I should just preface by saying these scripts in in no way follow the storyline of Shadow of the Sith because that's boring. Well, no, it's just because the novel wasn't out at the no. time that we started writing this. No. So maybe some people are going to go. They already wrote a story about Ray's parents. It's called Shadow of the Sith. Didn't read it. Nope. Don't want <laughs> so, to. This is yeah. much funnier. I bet this is much better <laughs> than whatever that story was. Yeah. Maybe I'll read it sometime, but uh, I've got bad news. It used to be my on my Amazon wish list, but I took it off my list when I uh, remade it hmm. for the holiday season it because is... I just wasn't very motivated. Yeah. So anyway... We did write two episodes. Yes. Because this was originally going to be an audio drama. Yes. We would hear if someone came in. Right. Uh, No, actually, we wouldn't. I unplugged the headphones. There's no speaker. What about your speakers? We can plug (laughs) my speakers in if we grab this. Okay. Just entertain them. Okay, uh, so anyway, yeah, we wrote, this was originally going to be an audio drama, but since, that we were going to release on the channel, but since the audio drama thing hasn't really worked out, we might, uh, you, we might write a, we might, sorry, we might put this into book format instead of audio drama format. I'm gonna, I'm gonna test something real quick. Uh, I don't feel, no, I don't want, wait, no. (laughs) No, no, never mind. Uh, keep talking. Oh no. Um. Hello. 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 It's working. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Hello. 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 Yes. Hello. Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, my God. oh well, that would have been bad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we should probably get started before we destroy anything else. Yes. All right. So let's start. Forrest, will you narrate? Yes. Tie fighters. Oh, by the way, the the writing here is mediocre. This is a rough draft. Yeah. Tie fighters. Oh, scene one. Exterior Coruscant. Tie fi- tie fighters fly in the skies above the cityscape of Coruscant, above the sounds of anarchy, blaster fire, and the screams of death on both sides of the conflict. Civilians and imperial soldiers fight each other in the streets, and deer. One of the Emperor's royal guards takes cover behind a fallen landspeeder with his companion and friend, Vanil. 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 An Imperial commander cries out from the comlink on Deer's wrist. There's no way we can hold them off at this point. We simply don't have the troops. How is that possible? There's too many of them. You throw in a random Imperial trooper uh, with that line. There's too many of them. You, just, you, also, put uh, in the, you also put in the Wilhelm scream. Yeah, right. <laughs> the trooper gets shot and killed. His words cut off with a Wilhelm scream. <laughs> we need to push forward. They can't take us all. That's Vanil. That's Vanil. Yeah. A line of blaster fire catches Vanil directly in the chest and he falls to the ground with a cry. Deer. Vanil! An explosion rocks the ground near where Deer is crouched and he's forced to fall back a bit as more civilians overcome the city block. 
The sounds of screaming, blaster fire, and chaos grows louder and louder. Then, silence. Interior. Art Collector's Mansion. Deer is zoned out, thinking back to that day on Coruscant. He snapped out of it by the voice of an art collector he had come to visit. Now, you be the collector, but try to do kind of like a... Like a, in an effeminate evil voice, or an effeminate, like, sleazy voice or something. Um, I don't know if I can. <laughs> um, I love that face she makes when she doesn't know what to do, and she's like... <laughs> <laughs> Sir, are you alright? Nope, that's not going to work. Okay. Um, uh, <laughs> that's not going to work. Okay. Uh, I'll do it. <laughs> Sir, are you alright? Deer grunts and straightens up, taking the tops of his red cape and holding them close around him. Deer. You don't have to keep saying every (laughs) single character. I'm fine. You know what I've come to see. Right this way, my lord. Deer follows the collector into a large room containing relics, paintings, and sculptures, all collected over decades and belonging to previous eras, some dating back centuries, as old as before the time of the Old Republic. One relic in particular catches Deer's eye. You'll never find a more valuable room on Cantobite. My collection stuff. Oh, trigger word! Uh. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Again, it's fun to just take planet names and run with them. Yeah. Plus, uh, I decided on Cantobite because Cantobite is a very high class, wealthy yeah. planet. Yeah. So. My collection started all the way back to my great grandfather. I have only ever given away one piece. Imagine if we had an entire <laughs> series that was just about that one piece. Uh, Great show, by the way. It was. But it was merely a fractured laser sword crystal from Dantooine. See, I, I used an older reference there. Mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm. In Nexus, we do not discriminate when it comes to Star Wars references oh, yeah. wherever they come from. We didn't mention this is called Nexus. Oh, it's called Nexus, yes. Star Wars Nexus, Nexus, yeah. We don't discriminate when it comes to references. No, nope, everybody is an equal opportunity. <laughs> everybody and everything. Yes. Yeah. Deer's cape sweeps the floor as he saunters across the room towards what he came to see. A black cylinder with golden accents and golden wings folded in perfect arcs sits almost hidden among the relics it shares a shelf with. I collector... I don't understand why you're so interested in that one. It's too big to be a candle holder, but too small for anything else. You're, dear, you're telling me you collected this. Collector, my grandfather, actually. Dear doesn't speak for a moment. He inhales long before talking again. Dear, you're telling me your grandfather collected this and failed to understand its significance? Collector. Art is subjective. I'm glad you recognize some meaning in it. Dear, a wide grin spreads across his face. Oh, I do. So much, in fact, that I'm taking it with me. The collector steps back. Collector. (laughs) That's not for sale. I may not understand its importance, but it meant something to my grandfather, and he wouldn't want me just giving it away to some low-life imp. Dear turns, his cape following him in a 180-degree angle. (laughs) Dear, I believe you're due for a history lesson. Your grandfather managed to acquire a lightsaber, or as it's known in this case, the Archangel. A lightsaber crafted by a master Jedi, only known as Ashla Incarnate. It is said it's powered by the Force itself, or at least that's what the Jedi Temple's old transcripts say. Collector, I don't believe in the Force. Why should I believe in some mystical religious mumbo-jumbo that controls everything? Gestures to his collection. The Force didn't grant me all of this. Decades of exploration and hard work in my family did. A grin spreads across Deer's face, this time permanent. It is by the will of the Force that I am here, and that you're too weak to stand up to me. Collector, listen, I... The collector gasps, and his hands fly up to his throat as an invisible hand strangles his neck and squeezes the life out of him. Deer stares up at the collector's wide, terrified eyes. Deer, do you believe now? 
The collector's neck finally snaps and his body collapses in a heap on the floor. Deer uses the force once again to crack and shatter the glass that contains the archangel. He reaches in carefully so as to not mishandle his prize. I keep dipping into Deer's voice as I'm narrating. <laughs> it's okay. Well, technically, Deer, he would be narrating. narrating. Yeah. Deer. At last, after all these years, I can possess the power this galaxy needs. A low purr reverberates from Deer's throat. It's beautiful. Now let me see. Deer clicks the activation button, but nothing happens. Confused and irritated, Deer presses the button again, but still nothing happens. The lightsaber doesn't activate. Angered now, Deer thrusts the Archangel down on one of the tables. Deer, I did not come all this way for you to be a dead end. Tapping into the forest, Deer assembles the Archangel, just enough to find the crystal chamber. The crystal itself is missing. Deer. Oh, yes, of course. I should have thought of that. This is when he's just talking to himself out loud. Yeah. Which makes more sense in an audio drama. Yeah. A lightsaber cannot be a lightsaber without its crystal. But the transcript said that the crystal itself was a rare, pure white crystal. The texts didn't say that another one like it was found, or where the original was found. But I've come so far. If one existed before, one can exist now. Deer snatches up the archangel and hooks it to his belt. At least this way he would be able to provoke fear into anyone he passes by. Deer. It's just a matter of pulling a few strings. <laughs> do, 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 do. Ooh, I'm blinded by the lights. <laughs> if we were editing this, this is where that song would go. Yes. <laughs> just... So it's just Imagine Blinding Lights by The Weeknd playing. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. As, that, as the Lucasfilm logo <laughs> is shimmering. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it says long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. That would feel so much like an MCU thing, yeah, but it would also MCU be opening, hilarious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very different. Yes. We wanted this to be, we wanted this to be different. Yeah. You know, we wanted this to be kind of uh, a little bit wittier, kind of like this, this sort of like planet hopping space adventure, yeah. you know. Um, kind of like Rebels, but yeah. a bit more adult. Yeah, slightly yeah. more, yeah. Yeah. Also, fun fact, Deer was originally called Dio. Yep, that's but, right. But we thought, I don't know if I'm, I have it up, so uh -huh. I can see. I okay. can see. But um, we thought that people might think, we thought that was too on the nose with the atmosphere you wanted to tackle, so we mm -hmm. decided to change it to Deer. Yeah, yep. It, it works, I it think. It does. It's a cool name. Scene two, interior, nightclub on Now Hata. <laughs> Blinding Lights by The Weeknd continues to play through a headset that Chorus wears. This is the part where everyone just, like, throws off their headsets and walks away. <laughs> We're not trying to take this too seriously, people. This is supposed to be fun. Mm -hmm. Former representative of Naboo within the New Republic. Though he's sitting, standing beside him with his arms folded is his companion Saad, a Zabrak, former knight brother of Dathomir. The music in Chorus's head drowns out a majority of the noise in the club. Twi'lek dancers dance on a stage while onlookers watch. A Falene named Zarut sits at the table across from Chorus and drums his fingers on the wood. A toothy grin spreads across his face. You must be Chorus. Oh, hold on, let me do this. You must be Chorus. Good job. Chorus's music still plays, and Chorus himself stays engaged with the song. <laughs> I just, my eye malfunctioned slightly, so... Saad eventually bumps him on the shoulder. Huh? What? Oh, that's, that's uh, supposed to be yeah. chorus. Oh, wait. Oh, that's chorus. And then Saad says that. Oh. I told you I this believe, might get to fun. I believe that's our client. So, fun, quick quick thing. Saad is named after the Marquis de Saad, which mm -hmm. is where we get the term sadism. Nice. Love it. I forgot about that completely. Yeah, so. I saw. I just thought we should go with the whole Maul, um, Savage. Mm -hmm. What was the other brother's name? Feral. Feral. Feral yeah. 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 Oh right. Yeah. You seem easily distracted. Perhaps I made a mistake coming to you. Chorus. Chorus stares at Zarut for a long minute, then starts. By the way, fun fact. 
for anyone, you know, absolutely no one would have any idea, but Zeru was the name of a D&D character that one of our friends made. Yeah. During uh, one of our campaigns, which we sadly ended. Yeah. Prematurely, because people move. Yes. And pandemics happen and stuff. Mm-hmm. And people move. Yeah. <laughs> but especially the people moving part. Yeah. yeah. Chorus, under his breath. Great start. Okay, so your Zeroot, the one I've been waiting two hours for, Zeroot. The Black Sun is operating within a complicated time. Some of us aren't able to meet with whom they've hired in the guild on time. Uh, by the way, the Bounty Hunter Handbook yes. <laughs> that I that I got is very useful yes, for stuff we like had this. To, we had to create our literally create our own our own fictional guild that we had, like listed everything out like rules and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. So the Bounty Hunter Code is what it's called. I have the Bounty Hunter Code, the Book of Sith, and the Jedi Path. Very useful stuff. Very useful. Chorus. Losing the Empire left the galaxy in a bigger mess than it was when the Imperial flag reigned. Zarut. Indeed. And it's cost us more than we care to admit. Speaking of which, that's partially why I'm here. What? (laughs) I was just thinking Zarut would ask, By the way, do you happen to know any Leia's? Can you just stop? <laughs> we're not here for that anymore. Man, you're going to be so relieved when we're done with that book. Yes. <laughs> yes. Steve Perry brought this on himself. No, you brought this among your, upon yourself. <laughs> and me. <laughs> Chorus. What do you got? Zarut. A band of Weequay pirates have stolen something very valuable to us. You okay there? That, yes. They hijacked one of our ships and stole an HK-77 unit. Its memory banks contain coordinates of some of our most critical trade routes and the schedules for when shipments are smuggled through them. Chorus whistles, but I don't know how to whistle, so... That's the best I can do. (laughs) An HK unit? You know they're like bloodthirsty killing machines. Zarut, we know... That's exactly why we use them. Chorus. How did a group of pirates manage to defeat an HK droid? Zarut. They came prepared. They knew what they were up against and were prepared to sacrifice everyone if need be. Chorus. Do you know where the pirates have taken it? Zarut. We do. Tatooine. And at this point, everyone's like, oh, Oh. again? (laughs) Hey. It just felt natural to start there yeah, yeah. again. Yeah. Again. Yeah. That It's just tradition. Yep. <laughs> Chorus doesn't speak for a moment. The sounds of a fight begin to escalate in the background. Rabble, 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 rabble. Glub, Chorus neutrally. I see. Zarut. The last known coordinates of the pirates there will be on the trekking fob I provide you. I trust there are no problems. Cora is still neutral, but showing signs of slight unease. No, not at all. Nope. Zarut, for one with such a reputation, you seem uneasy. Chorus, I have a reputation? Zarut, you represented Naboo in the New Republic, but knew when to step down. You killed the domestic terrorist Taran Lau on Terrace. And you assassinated Dagon Kai, who was leading a massive rally in Mos Espa against the Hutt family. That last one got a lot of people's attention. Fun fact, we wrote this before Mandalorian Season 2 dropped. Yeah. And then that season revealed that Biv Fortuna would have been alive at this time until Boba Fett kills him. So, so our origin- The original draft of... Of the rough draft, mm-hmm. said that we that they that they that course killed Bib Fortuna. Bib Fortuna. Uh-huh. So we had so we had to go back and change that. Yep, that's right. But I like what we did instead. Yeah. Chorus, I know people who've done better. Zarut, my point is, you are right for this job, and isn't it the guild's responsibility to take whatever is given to them? Chorus sighs. Fine. What should I expect out of this? Zarut. 30,000, but only if your Zaprak friend here doesn't go with you. Chorus. Chorus. 
What? What's wrong with my friend? Sad's a nice guy. No, oh, it's on a different uh, okay. chat stream. Anyway, don't don't stop. No, it's finished. <laughs> nice, nice. He liked it. Oh, sweet. No, you he can liked tell me it. about it later. Tell yeah. me about it later. Tell me about it later. Okay. Sad's a nice guy. That's what we said. Sa Sad's a nice guy. Zarut. We don't like Zabrax from Dathomir much. Chorus. Hey, my Zabrax friend from Dathomir comes with me or it's no deal. I don't care about rules of accepting. The Empire's fall took their Imperial laws with them. Zarut doesn't speak for a moment, clearly frustrated by working to restrain himself. The shouting match in the background reaches a boiling point. Zarut. Rubble, 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 rubble. <laughs> Very well. He can go with you. But your stubbornness won't be forgotten. Chorus. Get used to it. Turns out I have a lot of it. Zarut. For a former politician, you have quite the mouth. Chorus. Most politicians do. The sound of a blaster going pew, off from pew, the other pew, side pew, 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 of the globe cuts off the conversation. A Wookiee roars in pain as it stumbles backward do, and collapses over a table, taking out a chair with it. I can't do that. Well, good. I'm just going to ask my friend one important question. You can hear me loud typing <laughs> into the microphone. <laughs> now it's going to take off. Okay. Can, are we good? Yep. Are we good? Yep. Okay. Excellent. Yep. Okay. Uh, ooh, oh. Wait. There was some... No, we good. We good. Oh, we oh, good. Okay. I thought I saw another commenter. No. Okay, we're good now. Why? What happened? Oh, I I muted at me for a minute. Oh. But it was just for a minute while I was typing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Zarut, what in the nine hells is going on? Nine hells. A uh, little bit of a slang from the EU. A young man rushes towards the Wookiee, shoving people aside as he goes. Get out of the way! Move! The Wookiee grunts and moans in pain as the blaster bolts to the center of his chest sizzles away at his fur and flesh. Several men laugh and slap each other's backs as if to congratulate each other. Ha ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> I see what your job is. Because you have no lines right now. <laughs> no. Reese. Stang, you're hurt bad, big guy. The Wookiee groans something in response. Reese, to the crowd forming around him. Will someone help out and get a medical droid? Reese looks back down at the Wookiee, whose groans are getting quieter. Look at me. You're going to be all right. Just relax. Reese places his hand on the Wookiee's forehead, and the Wookiee doesn't resist. Chorus. What is that guy doing? Random bystander. What does he think he is? A magician? Reese sighs, connecting with the sound of the Wookiee's frantic heartbeat, which gradually slows to a peaceful crawl. That's it. There. The Wookiee sighs one last tearful moan, and his heartbeat stops. Reese sighs again, this time from disappointment. Everyone around him is quiet when he stands up. He turns to the man responsible for shooting the Wookiee. Reese, you there. The man wavers and stutters. Me? Reese, yeah, you. Come here. People start to back away, murmuring and whistling under their breath, tensed up wondering what will happen next. Wookiee killer still doesn't move. Reese. Switches to boiling anger. Do it. Well, let me do that again. Do it. Yeah, that was... You, you went too far with that one. What? Yeah. <laughs> Spoilers. Do it. <laughs> Wookie Killer swallows and finally walks forward. Yeah? Why'd you do that? Why do you care? He wasn't bothering anyone, unlike you. I... Reese clocks Wookie Killer in the face and he goes down with a wounded groan. People nearby cheer and hoot before going back to their drinks. Chorus. I think that's our cue to go. Sarut. Then you'll start right away. Here is the fob. Chorus takes the tracking fob from Zarut. Pleasure doing business with the Black Sun. Come on, Saad. Chorus and Saad leave the club and round a corner in the street to reach their ship. The outcast. Yeah, their ship, the outcast. Reese runs up behind them. Wait! I didn't do it. No, listen. I, uh, wait, Chorus. I didn't do it. Reese. No, listen. I need a ship. Chorus. 
What happened to yours, Reese? It was stolen by bandits. It's my fault I didn't leave a tracking beacon on it in case that ever happens. Chorus. That's cute. We always leave two. Well, pal, listen. We're not a taxi service. We're heading straight to our next job from here. No detours or stops. Reese. Where are you going? Chorus and Sod glance at each other. Tat Chorus. Tatooine. Reese. I've never been there. Chorus. Trust me, you don't want to go. Reese, please, trust me. This is what I want. Chorus is hesitant, but mulls over it anyway. Not quite sure how to feel about this. Chorus. If you ride with us, you need to help us with the job. Consider that your payment to us. Reese. Why get a, why get a cut out of the payment you get for completing the job? Chorus. We already have six crew members. Splaying a bounty among more would deplete our resources. Sorry, kid. If you want to earn money doing stuff like this, you're better off looking somewhere else. We'll make sure that the role you get in this job is simple enough. Then you can go to Anchorhead there and get a new ship. Reese. Appears disappointed. Okay, yeah, I can do that. Chorus, matter of factly. Good, then introductions. I'm Chorus. I'm in charge. This is Saad. He's second in charge. Saad, very second in charge. Chorus. And you? Reese. I'm Reese. Reese who? You didn't tell me your last... <laughs> you didn't tell me your last names. Hold on. This is completely, like, messed up. Yeah, it's, it's fine. It's uh, cool. it's, it's... Very second in charge. Chorus. And you? Reese. I'm Reese. Chorus. Reese who? Reese. You didn't tell me your last names. Chorus. You're right. I don't care. Let's go then. Dinner's almost ready and the others will be waiting. Reese. If it's any consolation, I look forward to meeting them. Chorus and Sod snort and bust out laughing. Ha 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 ha. You have to laugh with me. Ha 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 Nice. It makes me so happy. Yeah. Oh, here. That was that was months ago. Oh, where? Oh, okay. go back. Never mind. Okay. Go back. Here. Scene three. You know we're just doing this one episode, right? We were doing both. Nope. We had to do the second next time. For what? Seven hundred. Seven hundred and fifty. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Scene three. Exterior. Docking bay, because it's still gonna take us a while to get through this. It's true. Oh. Reese, Chorus, and Saad enter a docking bay where the cruise ship, the Outcast, is waiting. Reese whistles when he sees it. Actor needs to be able to whistle. Whistle good. <laughs> that is a note in the script. Reese, that's a dynamic class freighter. Not bad. Chorus, I was never one for enjoying the life of a politician, but the money was good. This was my very first buy after stepping down. Reese, you don't sound like a politician. Chorus, good. That's what I criffing want. Scene four, interior, outcast ship. Felix and Valence in an open panel on the floor of the outcast. The two constantly argue with each other. Now, I'm not going to bother saying the names here in this scene. Oh, yeah, because, uh, so just for clarification, Forrest will be Valen and I will be Felix. Yep. So, starting off with Valen. You really need to toss out your droid and get a new one, Felix. You take that back or I'll throw you, uh, or I'll throw all your helmets in the trash chutes. Don't you dare. Do you know how long it took me to... And do you know how long it took me to repair flippers? That is such a stupid name. It is his name and it is precious. Chorus shows up and clears his throat. Felix and Valen look up. Reese joins Chorus's side. Valen. No, that's Chorus. Chorus. Gentlemen. Valen. Oh, that's my cue. <laughs> Valen well, gets up and I'm leaves. I'm going to leave the room. <laughs> yeah. Valen gets up and leaves. Felix looks at Reese. Who's this guy? Be nice, Felix. This is Reese. He's joining us for this mission. <laughs> Be nice if we got someone else around my age for once. Someone shorter than me. Someone less handsome. I feel like I'm walking around rancors around you guys. Walking among rancors around I feel like I'm guys. walking among rancors around you guys. No. Rancors are ugly. I'm not. Is that one of your poems to Jaina? Reese, who's Jaina? The best cook in the galaxy and the only Karkin girl in our crew. <laughs> hey, language. Jaina enters the hall in a hurry, carrying bowls of soup. He gets it from you, you know. But please, Felix, no swearing. You know the rule. Reese, you must be Jaina. And you must be my little helper. Here, take this to JK. Pull your weight a little. Pull your weight a little. Jaina thrusts a bowl of soup into Reese's hands. 
I don't know who that is. <laughs> it's the big scary guy down the hall. Can't miss him. Felix said that. Fe- yeah. Great. Reese retreats down the hall with the soup, trying hard not to spill it. He reaches JK, a large burly man, working under a pipeline. Jaina, perfect timing as a... Oh. Oh, blast. Okay. Hi. Listen, kid, I was hoping for Jaina. Sorry to disappoint. Here's your soup. I would rather eat a womp rat raw than eat anything you've ever touched, even if Jaina made it. Fine. More for me, then. Give it. Reese hands JK the soup. JK allows himself to sit up and start eating the soup. Oh, I'll stang. Reese notices a stormtrooper helmet sitting beside JK. That's a stormtrooper helmet. No, it's a conk droid. Has your head been in the sands of Tatooine? Well, funny you should say that. Are you making fun of me? No, but given your guys' reputation, that's not hard. Get out of here. Go on now and let me eat in peace. My throat is too dry for that. <laughs> well, that's, that's the only scene with him, so it'll be good. Yeah. Kor swoops in and rescues Reese, pulling him along back into the hall of the ship. I am so sorry you had to endure that. You really do have quite the crew. Ow! Reese looks down to see a small droid the size and shape of a sea turtle. Yes, sea turtles are canon to Star Wars. They are. We looked it up. It's on Wikipedia. <laughs> its head, flippers, and underbelly are colored sea foam green, while the large shell is colored white and deep green. Its sleek design and smooth parts imply it was made with top quality materials. Well, hi, little guy. No, wait, don't! <laughs> The droid belches out an unholy screech of death. <laughs> Reese, by the twin sons, what is that thing? Felix rushes forward and scoops the droid up in his hands to squeeze against his chest. Oh, there you are. I thought I'd lost you again, Flippers. Its name is Flippers? Yeah, you know, because he looks like a sea turtle. Can you believe they were going to melt him down for scrap just because of, bro- just because of a broken voice box? <laughs> yes. Yes, I can. Chorus to Reese. You must be tired. How about I show you where you'll be sleeping? Reese. My own room, right? Chorus. <laughs> no. There are no doors on this ship. Which is true. We based a we based the outcast on the ship from um Kotor. The inside of the Ebon Hawk. From, from Kotor. Kotor. From Kotor, yeah. And there were no doors on that ship. Correct. Chorus leads Reese to an opening that leads to a dorm room. Five of the six beds are occupied. You can leave your stuff here and rest up for a bit. The ship rattles a bit, and Reese can feel it taking off. Chorus. That must be Valen. No turning back now, buddy. Chorus leaves Reese alone in the room. Reese sets his luggage on the only available bunk and sits in the middle of the room, folding his legs and placing his hands on his knees. With a deep breath, he closes his eyes and allows himself to drift. The sound of the ship jumping to hyperspace permeates his mind, and he reaches forward through the force to feel the hum of space outside. His breathing relaxes, and he can feel peace. Excuse me. This is Jaina, by the way. Yep. Reese opens his eyes and turns to Jaina, who's standing in the opening holding a blanket. I brought you a blanket. I realize the bed is looking a little bare. Thanks. Jaina drifts the blanket over his bunk. Sorry about... Well, they're all kind of... It's alright. Good. These boys are stupid, but they're my stupid boys. I thought Chorus was the leader. He is, but everyone listens to me. Right. Anyway. Anyway... I'll leave you alone to do whatever it is you're doing. See you soon. Yeah, see you. Reese resumes his meditation, allowing himself to drift with the hum of hyperspace. Scene 5. Interior. Cockpit of the Outcast. Jana enters the cockpit with a bowl of soup for Chorus. Chorus looks up from a data pad. How's our passenger settling? A bit winded, but he's good. (laughs) He had no idea what he was signing up for. What do you know about him? Not really much, only that his name is Reese, and he's possibly a mercenary, like us. Do you know what his home planet is, at least? No, or his last name, or his family origin. The guy's a blank slate. Well, last names aren't exactly important on this ship. Can we trust him, though? Do you think we can trust him? His mind is like a locked box, with the key tossed away. It's gonna take some time for me to get in. I think the two of you could have something in common. What do you mean? At the bar, a Wookiee got shot and was bleeding out on the floor. He wasn't able to be saved in time, but Reese came to his side, and, he's put, and he put his hand on the furball's forehead. He got the Wookiee to calm down. You think he has magic hands? Maybe. And so what if he does? Even with the Empire's fall, it's almost impossible to come by people like that. Hmm. 
Jaina makes a sound of approval, then sees the data pad in Kors's hand. So, what's new in the New Republic? Well, the Chancellor is calling for higher taxes in the core worlds to speed up repairs on some of the economic damage left behind by the Empire. Some worlds argue there was, some worlds argue there was no damage. Would you like to tell her that yourself? No, thank you. Excellent. Then I shall scroll on. You were right to leave the Republic. The moment they cut the military down was the moment I lost faith in the government. There's nothing like true freedom. Scene 6. Interior. Outcast Bridge. Chorus has Felix, Jaina, J.K., Val, and Saad, and uh, Reese gathered around the hollow table on the bridge. Flippers floats around on the table silently. Reese, if that droid screams again, we're making a pit stop by Kessel. Chorus, gentlemen, lady, we'll be approaching Tatooine in oh two hours. Valen, you know we're still banned from there, right? Reese, seriously, how do you get banned from a planet, let alone I think Tatooine? You were like, seriously? Seriously? How do you get banned from a planet, let alone Tatooine? Chorus. It's a long story. I'll tell you later. Anyway, just like the briefings I sent to your data pads, we're recovering a stolen HK unit from a band of pirates on Tatooine. With any luck, we'll be on and off the planet in less than three hours, if you all do your jobs right. There's no such... Jaina, there's no such thing as luck, Chorus. You know that. With this crew, I have to believe it exists. Speaking of which, gentlemen, lady, we have a new man aboard with us. I believe you've all gotten a chance to meet Reese here. JK. I don't like him. Just put that kind of chorus. Just put the kind <laughs> Just put that complaint in the box, JK, and Flippers here will be sure to eat it. <coughs> Reese. <clears throat> Hi, um <clears throat> I'm Reese. Chorus. This is Felix, the ship's mechanic. He knows this ship better than anyone else here. He's also third in charge of the crew. Hi! He has to be like 13. How is he third in charge? First of all, I'm 16. Second of all, I was the first to join Chorus and Saad. So that means you have to listen to me. And this is JK, former stormtrooper from the Empire, deserted at the Battle of Jakku. You fought on Jakku? Correction, I ditched the Empire at the very beginning of their first wave against the Rebellion there. So no, kid, I didn't really fight. He's our weapons expert. He looks after our armory and keeps Felix from touching it. I take full responsibility for trying to be an adult. <coughs> and this is Valen. He's the main pilot. Main pilot? I have to sleep sometimes. The ship is older than any of us. Someone has to keep an eye on the Nava computer. One time it was directing us straight into a star. Is this a bad time to say I'm out? Kind of. We're in hyperspace. I can always... Oh, that was Jaina. Yeah, Felix. Oh, Felix. I can always just... I can always jettison you off the ship and watch you get vaporized in the light speed of hyperspace. Reese stares. You know what, I'm good. <laughs> I guess I'm Jaina. I guess I'm getting introduced last. Very traditional of you guys. Chorus. I'm just saving the best for last. This is Jaina, our cook, and our mom. At least Felix is expected to call her that. Reese. We've met. She seems to be the only real rational one here. JK. If you don't think the rest of us here are rational, we can always, like Felix said, jettison you into hyperspace, or we can drop you off at a hidden quadrant overtaken by the Imperial Remnants and see what they'll do with you there. They might even ask you for your last name. Oh, I just realized that's a reference to Solo, a Star Wars story <laughs> at the beginning. <laughs> oh. And that was completely unintentional, too. Yeah. That's funny. <clears throat> Here... We are non-discriminatory towards any Star Wars material of yep. any kind, yep. of any era. Yep. Per your post-Disney. <laughs> mm-hmm. Including EU. Mm-hmm. Reese, that won't be necessary. So how are we doing this, then? If you all have survived this long together, then you have to be good at something like this. Valen, I already have an idea or two. Chorus. Oh, yeah, that's right. Valen is also our ideas guy. Valen. Seeing the pilot seat gives me a lot of time to let my mind wander. Don't worry, I've got this. Chorus. Before we do that, though, Reese, we need to know. Are you really in? Remember, it's either this or you pay us with the credits that could have been used to buy a new ship. 
Reese allows Corus's words to sink in. His mind goes somewhere to tap into the Force for guidance. The calm waves he's associated with in his mind return. They immediately crash and sink his metaphorical boat as soon as Flipper screams. <coughs> Reese, I don't think I have any doubts. I'm in, under one condition. That thing doesn't leave the ship with us once we get there. That, Felix, <clears throat> that's what restraining bolts are for. For some reason, it takes two to keep flippers in place. Reese, isn't that actually illegal on most planets? Felix, are we on a planet right now? Reese, good point. And honestly, I would love to see two restraining bolts on that monster. Felix, I can show you, I can show you right after we land. Chorus, you're not leaving the ship this time, Felix. This time? Criff, you... No, no, that, that's Felix. Oh. Felix, Criff, you never let me go on the cool missions. Chorus. Someday, someday soon, I promise. So then, if you're in, so then, if you're in Reese, there, then there's nothing left to do but to hear Valen out. Valen pulls out a hollow of Tatooine, zooms in on Mos Espa. Okay, so the tracking fob says they're somewhere in Mos Espa. They don't know that anyone's coming after them, so we have the element of surprise. Once we find their hideout, it should be no problem blasting in there and getting the droid. Reese, wait, we just go in guns blazing? Sad. It works every time. Valen, Felix can guard the ship while the rest of us find the droid. Jaina will need you especially. Sad. Ah, yes. The magic hands. <clears throat> what? No, no, that's Reese. Yeah, Reese. <clears throat> what? Of course. Yes, well, somewhere in Mos Espa doesn't exactly narrow things down. It would have to be somewhere where you can hide in HK-77. <clears throat> Jaina. A junk shop, probably. Only problem is the city has at least a dozen of them. Chorus, is this the part where you suggest we split up at that point? Jaina, I don't think we'll have to. Just let me lead. I have a good eye for these things. Valen, well then, are we good? Chorus, absolutely. Flawless as always, Valen. Reese, I have several concerns. JK, nobody asked you, flyboy. Valen, good, no questions. In that case, let's get started. The group straightened, except Reese. Reese's eyes start side to side, wondering what was going on. Suddenly, Cora speaks up. We are one with the Force. And, and the, the Force, Force is, is with us. To be continued. So that was... Episode one. Episode one. We'll do episode two when we reach 170 subscribers. Yeah, so why don't... Since we're giving you a Christmas gift, why don't you give back? <laughs> it's called an additional 150 subscribers. So anyway, all right, well... Um, if you're listening to this later on YouTube, thanks for listening. Uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, we will see you back with the next book we'll be doing for Oba Gold Shh. next month. Goodbye. Bye.